still remember that day very clearly and still feel the whole range of emotions that I went through whenever I talk about it. Welcome to Focus. I'm Jim Sayer. It seems so long ago that our country was involved in the war in Vietnam. It was a war which took place on the other side of the world and a war which we were only able to see on our television sets. Perhaps the most memorable aspect of that war was the huge opposition to it, especially on our nation's college campuses. From 1966 on, there were anti-war rallies, sit-ins, and hundreds of protest demonstrations. Some of them took place very close to home. Tonight, American and South Vietnamese units will attack the headquarters for the entire communist military operation in South Vietnam. April 30th, 1970. President Nixon announces the invasion of Cambodia in an effort to eliminate sanctuaries of Viet Cong and North Vietnamese soldiers. The invasion sparks rallies and demonstrations on virtually every college campus in the country, where it was seen as a step to widen the war previously thought to be winding down. Kent State University in Ohio was no exception. We want to get America out of all of Asia, all of Latin America, all of Africa. What are we fighting for? Throughout the weekend, rallies and demonstrations were held on the Kent State campus. After several disturbances in the adjoining town of Kent and the burning of the ROTC building, the mayor formally asked then-Governor James Rhodes for help. Rhodes arrives on campus that Sunday, vowing to take all necessary action to drive the agitators out of Kent. By Monday morning, tensions reach their peak. It's a quiet, warm, sunny, and as you can tell, a very windy day here on the Kent State University campus. Students have been going to and from class, going to lunch, some are getting ready to celebrate the Easter weekend. A few have even taken advantage of the wind to fly kites. But it was quite a different scene 15 years ago. On May 4, 1970, a number of students and National Guardsmen had a confrontation right down there in that area. It's called the Commons. Well, the National Guard decided finally to move the students out, moving them back up this hill. They all moved in this direction, the students followed by the National Guard. As they pass this point, which is called Taylor Hall, the students moved down into that area by the parking lot. The guard came past this point, stopped, turned, then turned once again towards the students and opened fire. 13 seconds and 61 rounds of ammunition later, four students lay dead and nine wounded. Governor Rhodes' promise had been fulfilled. The demonstrations had come to an end. The images of those moments following the shootings remain etched in our memories, one of the darker chapters of our nation's history. Kent State University today remains a viable institution of higher education in the state of Ohio. Despite the continued presence of rock and roll music, the university is now as it was then, with the exception of four days in May 1970, a relatively quiet place. Black squirrels forage for food near the site of the shootings. Some students sit in dormitory windows while they study, while others may come to the site just to read in a quiet place. But there are subtle reminders of that fateful day. A bullet hole from an M1 rifle remains in a cast iron sculpture near where the guard fired their guns. And in the parking lot near where they fell, a stone contains the names of the four who died. It's been 15 years, and some feel it is time to stop mourning their loss, but to study and reflect on the lessons we have learned. Underneath their pictures in the library's memorial room reads the inscription, Always go forward, never turn back. The May 4th incident is now very much a part of Kent State history, as it is a part of the history of our country, something which will never go away, even as the memories fade. Yeah, it's still very much real to me. Um, 
Now in his 30s, Dean Kaler was an undergraduate student at Kent State in 1970. Having never seen a protest demonstration before, Kaler wanted to satisfy his curiosity. As a result, he got more than he bargained for. He was struck by one of the guard's bullets and paralyzed below the waist. It's a very traumatic situation. It was very traumatic to my body and to my you know, mental and physical uh, health. Uh, you don't forget those sort of things very easily or in, over a short period of time. Fifteen years really isn't a short period of time. I still remember that day very clearly and still feel the whole range of emotions that I went through whenever I talk about it. Every time you go back to the Kent State campus, mm -hmm. is that an emotional experience for you? Yeah, it is, unless I'm going up for an OU Kent basketball game and I'm going strictly to the gymnasium or to the football field or out to the baseball diamond and I'm not around that area. Per se. But it is an emotional thing. Uh, just to drive into town, it's like, you know, you're going back to some place you're very familiar with and you had a lot of good experiences and a lot of bad experiences. I had a lot of, I had a real good time when I was at Kent. Um, most of my experiences were very positive, very constructive, and I felt I feel real good about going back to Kent. I just don't always remember Kent State University as May 4th, 1970. It's my education, it's the, the wheelchair athletics that I played there, it's the politics that I learned and worked through and involved in student, student organizations. Uh, it's being with my friends, uh, it's remembering uh, the whole range of experiences one has when they're going through school. For Dean Kaler, the events at Kent State 15 years ago have much more than a political meaning, for he is constantly reminded of his injury. But for today's Kent State student, the experience is one of learning and conjecture. How old were you in May of 1970? Oh, five. <laughs> yeah. Nowadays, most people are ap apathetic. At this university, I see a lot of apathy, and they care more about uh, their stereos or what's going on. They don't um, care too much about politics and, uh, and the events of the world. So I see May 4th as better days when people were more involved with their government. I just think that the people that got shot here just stood up for what they believed in and they had no reason to get killed for it. How about your friends? Do your friends have a similar attitude? Do they often talk about events of 15 years ago? Does it mean something to them now 15 years later? I'm sure it does mean something now but we try to um, uh, get rid of the thought and pretend, not pretend it didn't happen, but try to move on and not keep bringing the subject up and not keep talking about it and just hope it doesn't happen again. It, it is such a, a part of the history of this institution that, uh, in fact, the, the, one of the first pages of our catalog makes reference to May 4th, 1970. Dr. Michael Schwartz is the current president of Kent State University. If for some students, uh, it's very important. It's something they're interested in. Uh, we, we have quite a lot of questions asked by new freshmen every year about that. For other students, it's not important. It's not part of, you know, their life right now. It's not part of their experience, and, and they, they, they just don't care about it. They can't identify with they, it, No, they can't. But for many, uh, a remarkable number, considering you're right, they were three and four and five and so on, um, it continues to be a, a historically interesting uh, phenomenon to them. It's not really possible to be a student at Kent State University without knowing something about May 4th of 1970. And um, we even teach a course about it. 